Hey guys, so I'm just going to do a quick recap of some of the stuff that we learned last Sunday at our camp out. So we learned a couple of useful skills, a few different knots, as well as how to lash together a tripod for cooking on. Now I'm going to show you first off, I'm going to do a quick review on the square knot. So the square knot is pretty much the same knot that everyone uses to tie their shoes, except in that case that has ears. So it's a release, quick release um, square knot. A lot of people tie it wrong though. And from my personal experience, um, I tied it wrong for all my childhood, and then I learned the square knot. And once I learned to tie it right, my shoes never came untied, not that much anyway. So the square knot's pretty simple. It's used for tying two ropes of the same diameter together. And in this case, I'm gonna be using a larger rope just to show for demonstration, because it's always easier to learn knots on thicker ropes than on paracord or something small. So you take goes right over left, so you take your right hand, bring the rope over and around, so you create what you call a overhand knot, and then it's left over right. And it kind of looks like a square, that's why they call it a square knot. Now when you pull it tight, notice that the two free ends are parallel with the standing ends. All right, if you do it wrong, so if I go right over left and then right over right again, like that, which is the way a lot of people mistie this knot, when you pull it tight, notice how it forms more of a cross like that. So if you do it like that, that's not a square knot and it's going to be more difficult to untie and it's not going to be as secure. And then the other one I'm going to go over real quick is the clove hitch. We're going to be using that to lash our tripod. All right, so the clove hitch, there's a couple ways that I do it. Um, the way I learned, make a loop with the one in your right hand goes over the one in your left hand, and this loop's hanging down. Make another loop like that, and it looks like a figure eight. I fold the two loops together. And when you pull this tight, now you have a clove hitch. Let me pull it over an object so you can see. Let's see. All right, there it is right there. Now, it's, it's also useful to practice tying this around an object in case you don't have something like a loose, a free end to slip it over. You might have to tie it in the middle of something. So I'm gonna tie it, try to do this one-handed. So I don't have a proper thing to hold my phone while I'm doing this. But, okay, so I go over, around, make an X, come under, I'm gonna lift this up and go under again and pull it tight. All right. So that's how you do it if you're doing it over just a, an object that you can't just slip it over. Used to it is I've even boiled it down to a simpler way. Come make a loop, but this time bring your right hand around the back all right, so now pretend this is a clock. Grab it about at the four o'clock and flip it over. And there's your clove hitch right there, ready to slip over a beam and pull it tight. Um, I like to combine knots just so they kind of stick to my memory. So um, in the family of, I'd put it in the family of clove hitches is the constrictor knot. And it's exactly the same thing as a clove hitch, but with one extra turn. I'll show you right now. And in this case, it's exactly the same way of tying it, except instead of coming around the back, I'm going to come around the front facing me. So this part faces me. Do the exact same thing. Grab it at the 4 o'clock and flip it over. All right. And I'm going to tie it over an object and show you how that looks.
So right there is the constrictor knot. So it's the exact same thing as a clove hitch, except notice when I lift this up, you got a overhand knot. So it got an extra wrap and this is clamping down on top of that overhand knot. So when I pull it tight, that overhand knot is not gonna come loose like it would if I didn't have the clove hitch over it. And so what that does is it acts as a ready-made vise, basically. The, the more you pull it, you get a lot of leverage and you can cinch something down really, really tight. This can be used as a really speedy lashing. I can do it in a cross shape. I'll show you that some other time. Um, but this is one of the most useful knots that I've found. One of the ones that I use almost on a daily basis. All right, so to lash the tripod, to line up all your sticks, I like to have it elevated over something so you can put a log on the ground. What I'm gonna do is start by tying a clove hitch on the middle stick. Clove hitch or a constrictor knot. Now that that's tied, we're gonna wrap the whole thing loosely. And in the past, I used to get this really tight but I found it actually works better if you just make it loose at first. Keep it plenty loose. Maybe a little more string and tie it on here. And then this is what's gonna tighten it up. It's called the, the frapping turns. And that is where now you pass it between the sticks between the cracks, just like that. I'm gonna keep wrapping it a few times. See how it's cinching everything up tight? Do a few more. And then I'm gonna switch over to the other one and do the same thing over there. Keep passing it between. And this is where you really tighten everything up. Once you've done that a few times, come around back over here. And this is where you can finish it off with a square knot. Alright, now Off. And now if we really want to tighten this up, but as you can see it still can move a little bit, right? But if I come over here now, give it one wrap, two wraps, again keeping it loose for now, and then we'll do the frapping turns in between here. One more right there. Come over here, show from the top. Pull it all together, and that makes a really neat tripod. And then we can tie it off again with a square knot right here. Right there, cut that off.